Thermal scopes, thermal scopes, thermal scopes. Time to go again today. So that's my life. And then there's the truck. Since prior to February 24th, the renovations, since the war, he, he ain't done it. Um, not fancy, but I live here for free. Anytime I'm in Kiev, there was another volunteer, same thing. I made a bit of a mistake. About a week and a half ago, maybe two weeks before I went to Kherson, this is all water damage. Uh, I'm gonna try to dry it as best I can, but I hope it doesn't mold. I didn't seal that properly. So there's been some damage. Not today, not tomorrow, maybe not even next week. But little by little, I've got to pay for that. Um, he's let me live here for free anytime I've needed it. When I was sick with Crohn's, I lived here for three weeks. Now, this is cheap flooring, but some of it's gonna to have to be ripped up. I'm not gonna screw the guy. <sighs> Five more thermals. Plus, plus. I'm gonna get a little bit of food for the road. I've been doing all my running, I've been doing my press-ups, my sit-ups. I've been trying to do as much as possible. I, I haven't missed a day since I've been back, but I've been eating healthier too. So watch this. Nowadays, it tastes like nothing. The fruit, the vegetables. When you taste it here, you taste it. Cucumbers actually taste like something. You know what I want now? I like having a little mince around in the market. Dobre, Anko. Dobro. Jak sprawa? Все добре. А добре. А у нас як? Добре. Ми раді вас бачити. Mm, I don't know. Моє українське it's it's still pohana. Pohana, да? Yeah, but it's come. Chut chut, моє українське. Chut chut. Mm, два хач хачапори, будь ласка. Ой, ой, ой. Завтра, да? Ой, ой, ой. Best хачапори. So I want to talk to you guys about something serious, Hachapuri, okay? So what Hachapuri is, it's a big crusty bread, like in an oval shape and tapered off at the end, not unlike you know what. And in the middle, there would be like a salty cheese and there will be, it will be melted and they drop an egg right in it and it cooks right in it. So it's kind of like a garlic bread, garlic fingers, you know, that sort of thing, but with an egg in it and it's Georgian. Now, obviously for a food stand, you know, like it's not a restaurant, you'd have to cut into that. So they do it all up in here with that salty cheese and a bit of egg mixed. But that's 60 gravy now. So on the pegged rate, that's about $1.50 each. But I got two of those. That's my lunch. Six dollars I'm eating all day here. Look at this. I just go into this, turn this into a food blog. So I got beautiful apricots, and I got, no, these are raspberries, very good. And I got a beautiful bag of apricots that are nice and fresh. So I'll eat those over the next couple of days. And it's like, you're eating like a king and you can, t you can taste this shit, you know, it's not water. Grown in Ukraine. Show you the apricot. See that? And you can just squeeze into it. I love apricots. I've seen this a thousand times. Uh, I honk the horn, all the kids. Stop all crying. And um, I get a little tear. I get a little tear because. Um, you know, <clears throat> where's their dads, their uncles, their older brothers? Or do they come home with holes in them? Do they come home at all? And they go south and east and they get ripped to shreds. And you know, those little kids, I, I love them with my heart, with all my heart. I love them. I know you love them too. 
so there we are, Zaporizhia. God, you know, I haven't been to this city in probably about 13 months. I remember I also met a Delta Force guy who came over here for the possibility to maybe work and he smoked three orcs one night in one of the villages and I had to drive him out uh, of the village because nobody picked him up and he says, yeah, I'm going back to Somalia. I've got six kids. I can't afford to do this. And I was like, well, if you don't mind me asking, what was it like uh, for you as, you know, as a sniper, as a consummate professional, you know, he's 48 extra Delta Force, what's it like to kill a Russian? He's like, well, it's a matter of pride for me, he says. And I was like, how so? It's like, well, I grew up with Chuck Norris, you know, Rocky IV, and <laughs> he says to me, as a professional, to finally kill a Russian, it's not like killing an Asian or an African. Ah. Anyway, a little story time with Brandon driving around. I just talking to Harley. Uh, Harley's doing well. I don't remember exactly what he said because I'm tired, but he's gonna he's gonna take a few days and chill. But if you see those posts there, I don't I don't watch his YouTube, but I look at all his pictures and sometimes I share. Wow. Anyway, you didn't see that. Um, he's gonna take a few days and chill. Like I can't believe how many anti-tank mines they're pulling out of those fields. You know, and there's been some EOD people who dare I say are a bit jealous. Oh, you can't do this, you're not doing it right. But you know where they're saying that from? Other foreigners from Kiev. So, they can eat a dick, because Harley's getting after it. And down this road, uh, with the Delta Force guy and the Navy SEAL guy, who didn't end up being a friend, I tell you, um, they had a Major League Baseball player who came over to Ukraine and wanted to help. And they were all just licking at the chomps to get, get his help. There's a restaurant somewhere. Yeah, there it is, there it is. That's the restaurant right there. Don't crash, Brandon. Yeah, eating their fancy meals. But that's, that's Zaporizhia for you. The Navy SEAL, I had to get back to my, my place, which is like two hours away. And um, the Delta Force guy let me use the shower. That's quite nice. Not bad. <laughs> Have a little play of that. <laughs> so it said on Expedia $25 for the night, but then when it got to the taxes and the final, they screwed you $43. So look at me living in the hotel like the Red Cross for 43 bucks. Maybe that's why they're doing it. So good, they never left. Oi. I lost her. Wait, Look at me here. I've got probably about 20 grand in these bags, not leaving it in the truck. <laughs> Jesus, look at this. <laughs> the magic. I'm not gonna lie, I can tell it's a bit dated. But you can make coffee here, which not everywhere you can make coffee. So I brought my jet boy up. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that's all right, that's all right. Got a bidet. Now, I've seen one of these before, like this, but I don't understand how this works, because usually a bidet should fill up your bum, you know what I mean? Like it should sprinkle up, but I mean, if you've got this, I don't know how this works, like do you, do you, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not that flexible. But I'll try the bidet and I'll let you know. I'm a peeping Tom. <laughs> no, seriously though. So I've got three 35 mil scopes. I've got two 19 thermal scopes. And I've got two NVGs to go out directly tomorrow. Right. So I bought these new binos. Um, interesting thing about binos though. When we were doing our shooting work, we didn't have any the second night. Very hard to call the shots. So the first ones I tried were the Lacia, and they do lenses for Sony cameras, I know that. They were like, what were they? Jesus, over $1,000. And I was like, yeah, that's really cool, you know what I mean? And I was like, Jesus, no, I don't have that money, you know what I mean? And not only that, uh, morality, your money, but what if someone gets killed with something like that? That's $1,000. Tried the $500 ones. These ones are just shy of $200 uh, by Nature Trek. And I think the clarity is just the same. 
So now I can call the shots. So many applications for binos, obviously. I want to show you another one here. So we've got a Vortex rangefinder. Uh, this is one we bought for Maxime originally from Holland uh, for target designation. Now, obviously you can use it for that, but you can use it for range work as well. Uh, Vortex is probably one of the best ones. This costs about 500, but now in Ukraine, they're the same price. Well, they are now. Certain things in Ukraine have normalized in prices. Obviously not this stuff, but uh, let's show you how it works tonight. Show you some MVGs, show you some thermals, and look like a weirdo outside a hotel room. Right, so you know how binos work. Those work at perfect clarity at 10x. I'm gonna try to show you how a laser uh, rangefinder works. We'll do a bit of thermal work out the window and NVGs. Right, so this is your laser rangefinder. Check this building. So we're at 188 meters. Run the far one. 900 meters so that's a kilometer so you could call in artillery you could call in mortars you could report anything with more accurate reports so now you got zaporizhia by night and again this is very very good light obviously because nvgs it basically draws the power of light right so we'll very carefully hold my three thousand three hundred dollar device over the window and you can see for yourself this is a white phosphorus lens okay now there's a green night vision you see in the movies but white phosphorus you don't get the seasick feeling and you have more depth perception that's a big problem with early nvgs you'd be walking you didn't know what was five meters or 20 meters now i'm going to turn on infrared so you'll see that light that will give you extra aid in absolute darkness so you get extra aid in absolute darkness, but thermal vision will pick up infrared illumination. So you gotta be careful with that. Now for Maxime, we bought two infrared laser pointers. They work on a traditional laser that you will see, but they work on an infrared that you'll see through night vision. So you've probably seen that like series like Generation Kill. If you ever watch that, you'll see laser, you know, the Iraq invasion. You'll see these lasers that they only see through their night vision but we can enable that. So I bought those for Maxime. They were like 1700 each, um, but infrared detection, if you put on infrared mode, which will increase your view in the absolute dark, uh, you're detectable by thermal vision. So it's like rock, paper, scissors, you know? Now let's cycle through all our thermal stations and I'm gonna show you different zoom resolutions, but I'm gonna have to cut the edit because I have to adjust the lens for every zoom. Fusion red hot so you pick up red heat signatures which are pretty much only going to come from bodies or from where sunlight oh we got a red heat signature where was that lost them i'm on the white hot and then we'll move on to black hot okay so then on black hot you're going to see black heat signatures on people but i can i can use this as a purely as an observation and with the drones flying overhead, I'm not gonna show you that, but what we detected um, on the white hot, it looked like those black and white videos where the sperm, you know, is like trying to get up the canal, you know, if you've ever watched that. And we got one around probably, well, we clocked our own drone around 800 meters. So the Russian drone, I can't tell you because we didn't know the distance, but that's pretty impressive. You know what I mean? Let's look down below. Okay, and this is on times two. Oh, there's a Jiguli or a Gigolo. That's why I call, that's a joke between me and Pasha. Now I've got a Gigolo stable, an ambulance. See that black hot? That engine was on uh, probably in the past hour or so. So now you're starting to see how this works. And this is on times two. Watch this. Now I'll zoom, uh, but the clarity goes down a bit, but I can adjust that. I'm gonna go all the way to eight. See, you lose a lot there. Hard to determine. Watch this, wait a second. But look at that clarity. See that black? Again, the engine was running. And then if I wanna go in times four, still pretty good. But three, you start to lose it. You really wanna track your target and that's times eight. So you don't really know what you're looking at, but zoom out. 
but you could make the shock because you're just going to hold on to the heat signature, right? Change out, diffusion. Every different application, uh, fusion, red hot, it all has its place, okay? Uh, black hot, I find that easier to detect on my eyes. There's different contrast you might want to work on. So there's lots of things to consider. But as you can see, there you go. Right, so you see you got the NVG moving around the room. And uh, there you see Brandon. Now this is what I want to show you. You can see through a thermal, look at this sexy guy here. Watch this. Great resolution. Now watch this. I'm gonna put it behind glass. So I'm gonna put it behind glass now. And now you see nothing, nothing at all. That's why you need NVGs. So where's your NVG sees everything as well move it behind glass as you can see it still functions with pretty much the same clarity but that's why NVGs need to be used for movement and freedom of movement all the time whereas thermals is more for targeting and identifying but you can drive with this whereas a thermal it just reflects off the glass and you're blind you can have this mounted on your J arm those are quite expensive for what they're worth I can pop it up but I can use both I can shoot and I can move. So that's how it works. You can use an NVG if you have a laser attached to the end of your rifle and there'll be traditional laser that you can see and there'll be an infrared laser that you'll only see through the night vision. So I bought two of the laser range finders, uh, two of the laser designators for the rifles for Maxime's crew. They can use them the traditional way uh, in buildings, just but night vision's a game changer. Um, and that's why they cost what they do. And I'm bringing these two to an evac team tomorrow, but he's gonna do an interview with me and you can see, but I've, I've bought these since I've come back to Ukraine. I have paid for uh, three more sets and hopefully soon I have the funding, I'll buy a fourth one. Um, but so far to date, we've bought 19 of these at 3,300 a pop, okay, thermals, Keep going and going and going. Peter Boom.